Good morning, Mount Rurai. I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, who is the head of my life. I give honor to the beloved shepherd of this flock, a man of God, a man that loves God, and to his lovely wife that always has a smile. And to all the offices of this church and my brothers and sisters in Christ. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Because in the house of the Lord it should be peace and joy. It should be fellowship. And it should be love. And I would like to not only thank the pastor, but thank all of you that have prayed for my wife and is praying for my wife that has come a long way. And today is 60 days in the hospital. But one thing about that, God is in control. And I thank God that I haven't missed a day in 60 days. It's because we are servants of God. If we can't serve our family, we can't serve anyone. Amen. Amen. Pastor Johnson is a unique individual. One that I enjoy talk to because he has wisdom. And he is consistent. He's not wishy-washy. <laughs> and that's what I love about him. For Pastor Johnson is a friend. When I say that, he is a friend that checks on me. A friend that reaches out. And the evidence of a friend is when you're going through, you don't have to call them. They call you. And that is a blessing. And I love him as a brother in Christ. And this friendship is one that I cherish. And you have in Pastor Johnson a man that will not compromise. A man that believes if it's not in the word of God he doesn't accept it. And I applaud him for that. There is a word from the Lord, and it will be found in 1 Corinthians, the fourth chapter. 1 Corinthians, the fourth chapter. Let a man so account of us as the minister of Christ and stewards of the mystery of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. But with me, it is a very small thing that I should be judged of you or of man's judgment, yea, I judge my own self. Verse 4, for I know nothing of myself, yet am I not hereby justified by he that judges me in the Lord. 
and the Message Bible, which I will be focused on the first verse, reads, don't imagine us leaders to be something we're, we aren't. We're servants of Christ, not as masters. We are gods into God's most sublime secret. Not security guards posted to protect them. And yes, verse two, the requirements for a good God are reliability and accurate knowledge. The word of God for the people of God. You may be seated. Servants of Christ. Servants of Christ. To be a servant of Jesus is to seek his will in all things. And a number of non-Christians and Christians are preoccupied with self-gratification. Be all you can be. And there's a tendency to focus on self-fulfillment rather than making one's priority to serve God and others. This modern society we live in, it has made an industry out of self-fulfillment and self-help. Everything from dieting to reaching one's greatest potential, being a true servant of God, we need God to give us humility. Humility is serving while giving someone yourself to someone else. And sometimes some of your wisdom, some of your strength, some of your money, and it is letting go of something you possess for the benefit of others. A true servant is a person who sees the need of others. And it doesn't matter what causes that person to see another's need as long as he or she sees it. A true servant needs compassion. Compassion is being moved by another's pain or need. It is grounded in empathy or the ability to put yourself into another person's situation. The role model of compassion is the Good Samaritan in the Bible. Carriage, serving others, will inevitably lead to situations that move you out of your comfort zone. And you know, we don't like to get out of our comfort zone. And the fact is, when you give yourself in response to another's need, you become vulnerable to their pain, and you may well feel inadequate. A true servant is one who push past the fears to serve whoever and whenever God sends, wherever God sends them. Just as the Son of Man did not come to serve, but to, did not come to be served, but to serve. And while specific ways in which we serve is different in time, place, and positions. There are things that all God's servants have in common. We must desire to bring souls to Christ. And we must be called by God by revelation. And we must be willing to serve God with all our heart, might, mind, and strength. And we must prepare ourselves to receive the spirit of revelation. 
And we must be willing to teach repentance. Put God and his kingdom first. Be connected every day through prayer. Serving God and loving people. Dedicating and being devoted in passion to do God's will. A number of places in the scripture, we find servants of Christ. You'll find it in Romans 1. You'll find it in Ephesians 6. You'll find it in Peter, 1 Peter 2, 1 Peter 1. And it is one of the biblical ways that we speak about our right relationship to God that we call ourselves servants of God and of Christ. What is involved in serving God? What's not involved in serving him? If we start serving God as though we could earn wages from him, although we could meet his needs, serve as though we could put him in debt and make him our beneficial flashing lights. Biblical flashing lights that should come on and start immediately. Because in John 15, Jesus said to his disciples, No longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master is doing. But I call you friends. For all that I have heard from my Father, I have made known to you. Yet, in the preceding verse, he says, you're my friend if you do what I've commanded you. God is not served with human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself Give all things to mankind, life and breath and everything. Yes, we serve him by serving others. And sometimes the word servant doesn't go over too good with us. Because if you sometimes in a restaurant, I watch how people will treat a waitress or waiter. Sometimes if you go to a hotel, how people will look down on those that serve. Yes, we work, we serve, and we have a master to obey. And yet, every baby step we take is an obedience to our master. It is a gift of grace from him. It's a gift of grace from him. And all God's pleasing servants is done moment by moment, relying upon God to enable us to serve. We can't do anything without God, although some people think that they can. But the very breath we breathe is God's. And if he wanted, he can take it any time. But all that we do, we should be very mindful that we're doing it in the name of the Lord. And that God is allowing us to do it. Not that we can do it in our own strength. First Peter 1, 3 and 4. God's divine power has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. And through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, verse 4, by which have been given to us exceedingly great promises, that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Church, servants of Christ, 
We know who is the king. We know who's in charge. Because if you're a servant, there has to be a Lord. And he is Lord over all things. <laughs> he has given us instruction in his word. And he expects all of us who profess his name to know them. And when we learn more, we do better. And we do more. And all committed servants of Jesus will deny themselves and put into practice what we have learned about the obedience and pleasing our Lord and our Master. He has given us, he has ordained specific jobs for each of us according to the gifts and the opportunity he provides. Every gift that you have, God has given it. And he's the one that instructs us by the Holy Spirit how and when to use it. Too often Christians are too busy trying to understand the place of the pastor, the preacher, and the body of Christ. Rather than understanding and focusing on their own call gifts and place of a servant in the kingdom of God. He alone is the judge. We are not. He evaluates of the servants and is God alone. And we have no right to come up with some arbitrary human standards and saying that this person is ranked above and because of their title their position, popularity, their degrees. Je Jesus' calling and assignment is greater than any human plan, any position, any agenda, any church evaluation. And the text gives us a standard for the pastor and the congregation. Paul emphasizes that he and his fellow laborers are not self-serving leaders, but rather servants who work and serve in harmony with the mandate of Jesus the Christ. A servant of Christ is one who voluntarily commits willingly to set aside his or her own personal rights in order to love, to serve, and to obey the will of God in Christ. True servants of Christ die daily to themselves and to the flesh, the desires, allowing Jesus to flow through us that we'll be able to minister to others. See, our primary desire every day as servants are to honor and to glorify the one who brought us freedom from our sins. Again, this means that we die to ourselves desire. How willing are you and I to renounce our rights to direct our own life? So many people are going around, I have this right. I have that right. But are we willing to give up our right to follow the mandate of our Lord and our Savior, just as masters in ancient time took on the responsibility for carrying their bondservant. Our Lord says that he will provide all we need if we first seek the, his kingdom and his righteousness. Our Lord has called us to be servants, and there are some requirements. We are to pursue holy living, pursue holy living. Jesus commands us to love our neighbor, but he also says, love your enemy. And all of us in here got some enemies. 
And we need to love them with the love of Jesus. And we must take every thought captive to obey Christ. Continue daily in prayer and in faith. And eagerly await Jesus' return. Our primary duty is to serve the Lord faithfully. And Paul understood that God's mystery, his truth, his word, we all are accountable to God, how we handle and share the truths with others. Church, the true servant of God, your pastor, should be respected and honored because he handles the word of God rightly. And a true servant is connected to other believers being truly devoted in obeying Jesus with a passion for the gospel, ready and willing to act as the Holy Spirit will lead, will nudge, will inspire us. Never forget, it's not about rewards. It's not about praise of men. It's not about accolades. It's not about money. And we must have a servant heart. And this prevents you and I from thinking, getting big head, or being tempted to use our ability, our gifts for our own personal benefits rather than glorifying Jesus in service. Mount Moriah. There's three types of servants who serve in the body of Christ. Number one, the obligated servant. Number two, the prideful servant. Number three, the purposeful servant. And they all have different impact in bringing in the harvest of souls that God has prepared. To be a faithful servant, we must be godly humility. Godly humility. Because sometimes I hear people talking about humility, but it's not godly. Trust in the Lord and forgive others and be obedient in all the ways to God. Not only is it required of the servants to be faithful, it is required that stewards be found faithful, trustworthy. Servants are to be good stewards. Peter 4 and 10, each of you should use whatever gift you have received as faithful stewards of God in the various form. See, stewardship is recognized in everything we have, everything that we are, and every gift from God, and to be grateful and generous with those gifts. How often do we really share the gifts that God has given to us? Too many times we look and say, they got enough. They doing all right. But you don't bless people by what they got. You bless them because the Holy Spirit said bless them. Because when you follow that, there's a blessing in it for you. And see, God has called and ordained stewards that each one will have a responsibility to manage that which he has assigned. With our time, with our talent, and with our treasure. And it helps to increase the kingdom of God in this world. And as stewards of God, we make his love visible by imitating Jesus the Christ. Stewards, managers of that which belongs to someone else. Which belongs to someone else which belongs to someone else. In this case, Paul and other ministers are entrusted with the deep truths, the mystery of God. And Pastor Johnson, you have the experience of being a steward and a servant of God. 
And it's not an easy life in this world because the enemy of God, Jesus, our soul, the world, the flesh, and the devil are battling. They are striving to destroy and to kill us. And there's a positive and an encouraging side. God often uses hardship to make us faithful servants. Read and study the life of Jesus the Christ, David, the prophet, and the apostle. And I believe, Pastor Johnson, these past 19 years, you have discovered that the hardships is part of the package of the ministry that God has given to you. See, hardships and affliction are the life that helps us to be able to comfort others when they are afflicted. And the apostle Paul, a faithful servant, he was beaten, left for dead, he was shipwrecked, yet he wrote in 2 Corinthians 4, 17, for our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. And Paul puts it, was put in prison. And even from prison, Paul wrote, Rejoice, rejoice in the Lord. Again, I say rejoice in prison. And you can write rejoice. I want that to sink in. We should be rejoicing all the time because of the love of God that's in us. And it has been said that those that God used, he first hurt them deeply. And I found that to be true because if you love God and you love people, you're going to be hurt. You're going to be hurt because you see them going in a direction you know that is destruction. And that hurts you to see people drifting away. They've heard the word, but they're drifting away. Be a faithful servant of the Lord, and he will entrust to you. And you will be a good steward. Be a good trustee of the mystery and the purpose of God. It is revealed in Jesus and the apostle. God has called. God has sent. He's still calling. He's still sending stewards to share his word. And the gospel of Jesus, the good news, all believers are to share, to witness the gospel. Pastor Johnson, as a servant of the Lord and a steward of God's truth, you have been given a mandate to preach the word when life is calm, when it's peaceful. Preach in trouble and terrible times. Be faithful servant when God may seem to be silent. His word is hope for the hopeless. Rest for the weary as a steward of God's word. Preach his truth. It has the power to change, to transform lives. His word instructs us how to live righteously. Jesus Christ, the servant, laid aside his majesty. May made himself of nothing. Taking on the very nature of a servant. Being made in human likeness. Freed himself of heaven's glory. Willing to become a faithful servant. The son of man did not come to be served, but to serve. And give his life for a ransom for many. Jesus is a suffering servant. He was despised by men. A man of sorrow, familiar with suffering. He was oppressed. He was afflicted. And yet, he did not open his mouth. And one pride... One Friday, the soldiers led him up a hill called Calvary. They nailed him to a tree that he created. And the earth trembled and quaked. 
And there was darkness from the sixth to the ninth hour. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. But with his last breath, he said, Into thy hands I commend my spirit. He died, yes, he died for you. And he died for you. And he died for me. And they buried him in a barry tomb. They buried him, but three days early on the third day, early on resurrection morning, he got up with all, not some power, but all power in heaven and earth. Resurrection power that will live forevermore. He is the one who lifts us up when we are down. Jesus is coming back for a glorious church. He's coming back for obedient servant. Jesus is the living water. Jesus is the bread of life. Jesus is the bishop of my soul. Jesus is the light of the world. He is the great physician. Jesus is our peace. He is our advocate. Jesus is our mediator. Jesus is our company keeper when no one else is around. Jesus will give us comfort. Oh, oh, how wonderful he is. He's the captain of our soul. He's our deliverer. He is our high tower. Jesus is our intercessor. He is the lifter up of our head. He is the one when the doctor says no. Jesus said, I'm in charge. But when the doctors write you off, that's when he lifts you up. And I must share with you, they have wrote my wife off two times. The doctor said, send her home. Call hospice in. That was at Hershey Medical Center. But God raised her up. Went to select special. The one doctor said, let nature take its course. Call hospice in. But she's alive today and she's in good spirit. See, if you be a servant of God, God will bless those around you. He'll bless your family. He'll lift you up when you're down. I don't know no one else that can do what Jesus can do. Yes, you have to trust him. You have to trust him totally. See, when you trust him, you say, whatever you do, Lord, I'm going to trust you. It looks dim. It doesn't look good. But I'm going to trust you, Lord, because I know it's in your hand. See, when you put it in your, his hand, you can sleep at night. See, I slept through the thunderstorm last night because everything is in God's hand. See, God is looking for servants. How many servants do God have here? How many stewards do God have? He's looking. If you yield to him as his servant and be a steward over his word, you will see miracles that you've never seen before. And you'll have a joy, a joy, unspeakable joy. A joy that nothing can take away. Be a good steward in Christ Jesus. Let us pray. Gracious Father, we thank you for your love, for your grace, for your mercy. We thank you for calling us to be your servants. And Lord, we are yielding ourselves to you. Take and use us for your glory, for your honor, Lord. Because we have none other but you. You are all in all, Lord. So Father, bless this word, bless this congregation and bless 
this pastor in a special way, Lord. Give him a fresh anointing to go forward. Continue to preach your word. Continue to lift up the name of Jesus. Amen and amen.